And the news continues still in Uganda. Ten children have been killed in a lightning strike while sheltering from a storm during a football game in northern Uganda. Police said this on Friday. Josephine, police spokeswoman, said the boys aged 11 to 16 had been sheltering from a storm in a makeshift structure in Arua City, which is the northwest of the capital in Kampala on Thursday when this happened. According to the police, the young boys had been playing football when rain began to fall and lightning struck them. The children were sheltering from the rain in a grass-thatched house when the lightning struck on Thursday evening and four other children were injured as well. The spokeswoman said relatives have been picking up the bodies from the mortuary since yesterday and the burials are taking place from today. Deadly lightning is commonly reported in the East African country during the wet season. She advised schools to fix lightning arrestors and Uganda National Meteorological Authority recently warned of enhanced rainfall. Joining us to talk about this is Raymond Mujuni. He's an investigative journalist based in Uganda. Thank you, Raymond, for being with us. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah. Now, deadly lightning is commonly reported in Uganda. I'm wondering what can be done to protect homes, especially in villages, apart from, you know, the, uh, installing the thunder arresters. What else can be done? Um, I, I think the what has been done by government is having a meteorological authority consistently issue rain alerts, um, particularly when it's going to be heavy rainfall, and urging populations in those areas to be on the lookout for possibly lightning that might come. Of course, lightning, like all the other events, is an unmatched event. It's not an event that announces itself. So um, just letting the populations know that the rainfall will be coming, particularly in areas where it's going to be hard and strong and heavy, and knowing that there might be incidents of lightning, then the population can prepare itself. But of course, the lightning arresters are another way of, of, of fighting back. Uh, lightning arresters cost about $3. Not many families can afford that away from the capital city. And where this lightning happened is about 350 kilometers from the capital city. Mm -hmm. So that's an also another conversation to get into. Maybe have local innovations for lightning arresters that are not um, as expensive as $3 in the capital city. Mm -hmm. I mean, you just took the question out from my mouth because I was going to say, how affordable and accessible are these lightning arresters? And in the event that they are not as affordable as you have mentioned, what option is the average Ugandan left with? Yeah, th that's another question to look at very broadly. Um, when you look at the, the household earnings away from the, the city centre, they are down to about... Uh, $15 a month. So if, if a family has to spend $3 on, on a lightning arrest, that's something that could be a major spending for them. But what can be done are local innovations. In many towns around the, the country, there are local innovations for steel plating, which creates for, for lightning arresters. So maybe uh, time is ripe for us to start to explore uh, and have um, local innovations for lightning arresters other than the expensive ones that are sold in, in the capital city. Right. I mean, it's unfortunate to hear that these young people, you know, died from uh, that uh, experience, that, that uh, uh, experience rather yesterday. Uh, but I'm just wondering, how informed are the people, even though Uganda National Meteorological Authority is warning of enhanced rainfall, how is the country bracing for this at a, at a bigger level? And the people, how well informed and prepared and ready are they for this sort of information? you know, expecting this to happen in the near future? Um, so, so rainfall has dire straits, particularly in our country. Um, in the eastern part of the country, it normally leads to mudslides, landslides. And over the last 10 years, families have been asked to move from areas where mudslides happen and come to, to the uh, field and plains. Um, in the western part of the country, rainfall particularly affects the planting seasons. And uh, we are an agricultural country, so if planting seasons are affected, then people's incomes are affected uh, thereafter. Um, what's been happening over the years has been consistently urging people to prepare themselves for, for large rainfall, but also start to prepare themselves for any eventualities that might come from that rainfall. We are perhaps one of the few countries in Africa where we have a ministry for disaster preparedness. There's a whole ministry dedicated towards um, averting 
potential disaster coming from rainfall. And of course, we are in the rain belt. Um, this country is the place where the equator crosses. Um, so we have rains almost every um, annual season. So the, the best thing that's been happening is having a meteorological authority, let people know what's coming, and then having a disaster prepared ministry to deal with what whatever disaster might come out of the rain. Yeah. But also you have local innovations, like I've told you. You have very many populations which have found some local innovations to deal with the rainfall. In the east, like I've told you, people know now to know when the rainfall is coming and move away from areas where mudslides would have happened. So they have early warning systems that they use. In the west, like I've told you, there are local innovations for, for lightning arresters. There are local innovations for collecting rainfall and using that water towards other purposes like irrigation. And maybe more of those innovations might help the country moving forward. Indeed. Uh, we, we look forward to seeing more of those uh, innovation. Thank you so very much, Raymond Mujuni, for your time. And do keep safe out there as well. Thank you so much.